Hello and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here then welcome my name is Cassie Johnson and I am so glad that you are here. I'm really excited to make this video today. I know that a lot of you are going to be like, what do you mean? Why are you making a video all about mock-ups? We know how to do mock-ups, but I actually just got done doing a ton of shop reviews. A shop review is where I actually record myself privately reviewing someone's Etsy shop. I go through your designs, your mock-ups, your descriptions, your logo, your banner, and give you advice on what you can tweak to do better, what you're on the right track with, and then tell you what you can work on next to really grow your shop and I was gonna make a completely different video for this week but this is one thing that I really just keep seeing people think they're doing right but they actually are making really really big mistakes with and it is mock-ups and since most people on Etsy just go to the Etsy search bar type in what they're looking for look through all of those search results click on one and buy it, that means that your thumbnail is arguably one of the most important things that you can focus on. So in today's video, I'm going to go over some of the most common mistakes that I see people making with their mockups, what great mockups are and how to find them, how to make them look more realistic to what they'll actually look like when the customer gets them using canva.com, and then also how to add multiple mockups to the same project in Canva so you can get your mockups done more efficiently. As a bonus, I also made two examples of different photo cards you can add to your listing just so I can show you what the full package should look like once you do this all the right way. So make sure to stay until the end for all of these nuggets. Even if you think you're doing this the right way, there might be a little mistake that you're making along the way that could really make all the difference. And if you're feeling stuck and not sure what mistakes you're making even by the end of this, then I will have my shop reviews and one-on-one -on -one coaching calls linked down in the description below, and I'm happy to help however I can. So first I'll go over the most common mistakes that I see people making with their Etsy shop thumbnails and mock-ups. And the first one is not using contrasting colors. So there can be exceptions to this rule, but I see a lot of people doing black text on say a dark gray shirt or a darker color shirt or doing lighter text on a lighter color shirt. And when it comes to actually looking at that thumbnail in the search results compared to everyone else, it gets a little bit lost in the shuffle, doesn't quite catch your attention and people are just scrolling on by. So just as a good rule of thumb, especially when you're first starting out, do dark designs on light colors and light designs on dark colors. Another don't that I see a lot of sellers using is cursives that are hard to read. Those swirly cursives are really pretty on your big huge computer screen when you're designing them, but if you can't read it from the tiny thumbnail, then no one is going to buy it. So make sure that you're using big, bold fonts. Even for cursives, there are bigger, bolder ones available. That way you can easily read it even when it's tiny. So this one might seem obvious to most of you, but I see a lot of people making this mistake, and that is actually using mock-ups that aren't the actual shirt that you're selling. So it's really important to use mock-ups of the exact shirt that you're selling. So for instance, if you're selling the Bella and Canvas 3001, you wanna make sure that your mock-up is of that actual shirt. I see this the most with people who use placeit.net, and that is a website where you can actually download hundreds of different mockups that are digitally made for you. And it's all great, but there are going to be lots of different types of shirts on there and not always the exact one you're selling. So it'll have different sleeve lengths, different collars, and it will just not look like the actual shirt when someone gets it. And I think it's just really important to actually use mockups of the shirt you're selling. Another big mistake I see people making is not lowering the opacity on their designs. And so the design looks very computer generated and fake on your mockup. I'll show you a little later on in the video how to lower the opacity using Canva. That way it looks more like the ink is actually sunken into the shirt and more realistic to how it'll look actually printed. Now the second most common mistake that I see people making is using Printify or Printful's mockups 
for the colors that you don't have mock-ups for. Now this is one of the biggest no-nos out there. The Printify mock-ups that come with the design are hideous. These are not going to help sell to your customer how great this shirt is gonna look on them. If you don't have a mock-up or a color chart for that color, just don't use it. That's my best rule of thumb. These are going to hurt you more than they are going to help you. The last big don't that I see a lot of people making, and this one you might be doing today, is feeling like you need to buy a different mock-up for every thumbnail in your store. The reason why this is a big no-no is you're gonna end up buying lots of different random mock-ups, spending a bunch of money that you didn't need to, and not making sure that they are the very best mock-ups available for every single design. Again, most Etsy customers are typing something in the search bar like women's t-shirts, they're going through the search results, clicking on one and buying it without ever coming to your store. So don't feel like your Etsy store needs to have tons of different mock-ups available in it. Once you look at some of the most successful stores, you'll see that they just use the same mock-up over and over and over again because they've found which mock-ups convert the best for them. So I'd try out some different mock-ups and see which works the best for you. And then I would just keep reusing those same mock-ups as your thumbnail photos every single time. That way it's one less variable to try and have to figure out every time you make a new design. So now on to what makes a mock-up a great mock-up and how to find them. So I go ahead and actually purchase all of my mock-ups on Etsy.com because this is the largest place that has amazing mock-ups available from tons of different sellers. So let's go ahead and see what the difference between a good mock-up and a great mock-up is. So I went ahead and just typed in women's shirts. So when I'm looking for great mock-ups, I go through and see what's working well for other people. And if I keep seeing the same mock-ups over and over again, especially on bestsellers or big stores, then I know that those are best-selling mock-ups and convert really well. So like this mock-up, for instance, from this store is being used again twice up here in this top row. I see this mock-up literally all the time in tons of different stores. So you'll kind of start paying attention to what's working well for other people. What are the big shops using? What are their best sellers have? What types of mock-ups are they using? And really this year I've seen a huge shift from these flat lay shirts to these actual human mock-ups and they've been making a huge difference once you look through the best sellers. More and more of them actually have those types of mock-ups as opposed to the flat lay ones. But essentially what you want out of a mock-up is a gorgeous picture that really tells the customer how great they are going to look in that shirt. One of my very, very favorite mock-up stores is Moonlit Mock-ups. Nothing sponsored by them, I just think they are absolutely gorgeous. So for instance, if you wanted to buy a few holiday mock-ups from them, you can see how this beautiful photo is going to probably convert better than just a random flat lay with nothing to do with Halloween. Another one of my absolute favorite mock-up stores is Lennon Smith Mocks. She has some really, really beautiful mock-ups that'll help make your store look more professional today. Also, shameless plug, here is my mock-up store, Stop, Mock, and Roll. This is a mock-up store I started with my sister Sam last year, and we have a couple nice mock-ups for you as well. So just like I said in the first point in the don'ts, you don't have to buy tons of mock-ups to have a successful business, but buying at least six of the nicest mock-ups that you can find, the absolutely most beautiful, most gorgeous mock-ups out there are really going to make the biggest difference in your store you would not even believe. I wish that I would have started buying nicer mock-ups sooner because trust me, this really does make all the difference in getting someone to actually click your listing and give you a chance. So now I'll show you how to add all of your mock-ups to the exact same project so you can make your mock-ups more efficiently and I'll show you how to lower that opacity that way you can make them look more realistic to what they'll actually be printed as. So you want to go ahead and click create a design but now instead of doing a custom size or picking anything else you're going to go ahead and actually click edit photo and you'll select one of the mock-ups that you've purchased. 
So now that you've opened up your new project with your mock-up, the canvas is automatically going to be the correct size of that exact mock-up. So now you'll want to go ahead and click Add a Page, and this is where we're going to add another mock-up in. So you'll go to your uploads, you'll go ahead and upload files, and upload the other mock-ups that you've purchased. So now you do have to keep in mind you want to have two projects, one with any mock-ups that are long-wise and another project for any mock-ups that are taller. This does only work with the canvas staying the same size. So I do recommend as you're purchasing mock-ups, if you can, just go ahead and purchase mock-ups that are just long ways just to keep it simple and easy for yourself. So you'd go ahead and actually drag the mock-up that you want over into the space and then you're just going to drag and drop it until it's the same size as the canvas above it. So if you have to cut off some of it, so be it, but this is going to be so much easier. Then you also want to try and center the actual t-shirt. That way you don't have to try and center your design off-centered if the mock-up say is over here. So once we do that, we'll go ahead and add a page, and then you can even drag in, say, another one. And again, drag this one larger, make it take up the whole space, and if you can, get it to where, again, that shirt is more in the middle of the page instead of getting cut off. So now you have one project with all of your mockups within it, and now you can actually just save them in bulk after you add your designs. So I went ahead and saved this design that I made in last week's video. If you missed it, I went ahead and showed you how to make best-selling Halloween designs using Creative Fabrica. So I'll link that video down below if you missed it. I did a tutorial on how to make another design and then also kind of walked you through how I made this one as well. So you'll go ahead and add the design to your shirt. And then this little button here is for the transparency. And you'll go ahead and bring this down to anywhere between 85% and 95%. Uh, you'll have to kind of play around with it per design to see what looks best and makes it look more real for you. And it's important to make sure that you're being realistic to the size that the design will actually be once it's printed. So the easiest way to do that is to compare to the size that you made it in Printify. So for me, I like to add my design up as high as I can on the shirt, so as close to this dotted line here as I can. Then I like it to go an inch or two past the collar on each side. That way it takes up the full chest area. And when you click preview here, you can really get an idea of how much space that's gonna take up on the shirt and compare when you're going back and forth between making your mock-ups and actually uploading it to Printify. And this will get easier over time, but at first I just go ahead and eyeball them back and forth until you feel like it's a pretty close fit to what it'll actually be printed like. So now that we've lowered the opacity and gotten the design the right size on our mock-up, we can go ahead and actually right click it and push copy, or you can even click this duplicate button. Come down here on your next mock-up, right click and push paste. So you'll probably have to resize the mock-ups to make it the correct size if the shirts aren't the exact same size. You want to kind of try and position it, and this part is important. You do want it to be as close to realistic as possible, you know, an inch or two below the neckline, right in the middle, about as big as you said it was going to be. And then you'd go ahead and add the new design if you were doing two like I am here for the actual white. So I'll go ahead and add in the one with the black checkerboard instead of the white. We'll resize this one to the size it'll actually be on the shirt. Again, we'll lower the opacity. This time I did about 90. That looks about right to me. And so now you have all three of your mock-ups made. And you can go ahead and click Share, Download, and then you save all of your mockups as a JPEG, not a PNG. If you're getting that your mockups are too big, it's probably because you're saving them as the wrong file type. So do JPEG, all three pages, and click download. And just like that, you're going to have all of your mockups ready to go. So like I said before, it's a big no-no to keep any of these Printify mockups. So I'm going to go ahead and actually delete all of the mockups from Printify, and I'll show you what I'll add to actually make it a really successful listing. So what I added to my listing here is three beautiful mockups that really show the customer what their design's going to look like and how great the shirt's going to look on them. 
then I have a size chart, and then I do one or two photo cards. So for this example, I made you two. So I made one for reviews, so highlight a good review you've gotten about the actual t-shirt, and then this can actually be a secondary mock-up. So you could make this new for every single design, and instead of doing a separate mock-up, you'd add your design for each listing onto this actual photo card. And then you'd add your logo in the corner to make it all nice and branded. And then here I have a photo card giving them more information on something. So one example here is talking about how I don't take returns or exchanges, but you could do something like a care card or any other information you think they should know because if you can answer all of their questions from the photos without them ever having to go to your description, that will help with your conversion rates immensely. Again, if you add your logo to these, make them your brand colors, make it even match and look really nice with your size chart this is just going to again bring your listing to the next level and help you get those conversions so the last thing I want to show you is actually how to zoom in on your mock-ups and the right way to do that. Because if you're looking here, again, we talked about how your thumbnail is one of the most important pieces to the puzzle of getting sales on Etsy. Right now, you actually can't read the word nurse very well in this tiny little thumbnail photo. So either you need to make the design bigger or you need to zoom in. In this case, I think the design is actually bold enough. I just think the picture is too large. So we're going to go ahead and unedit that and actually zoom in using this closer to the design. So this is about exactly where you want it. You want the design to take up about the whole center of the thumbnail, but you still want to show the pretty mock-up and what's around it. So sometimes I see people zooming in only on the design, which is not what you want. You want it kind of somewhere in the middle where you can still see the nice mock-up, but now the design is actually better showcased and go ahead and actually save that. That way it stops people in their tracks while they're searching. They can easily read it, see exactly what your shirt's about, and that should help you get more sales on your Etsy store. I really hope this tutorial helps you in upgrading your mock-ups and making sure that they're done the right way in your store so you can get more sales on Etsy today. Thank you so much for staying all the way until the end and for supporting my channel so far. If you haven't yet, feel free to like this video and subscribe if you're getting value from these videos. And I just wanted to say a huge, huge thank you to everyone who's supported me so far. I just hit 10,000 subscribers this week, which is absolutely crazy and amazing and I can't believe how fast I got here and it is all thanks to all of you so I couldn't appreciate you more and I wish you all the most success and happiness and I'll see you in the next one.